Hello and welcome to Heilman and Haver, the stage and screen podcast, coming to you from Casa de Quinn and 1111 Studios in beautiful Port Orchard, Washington. I'm Matt Haver. And I'm Greg Heilman. We're two local actors looking to hone our craft by exploring the best in local theater and on the big screen. Each week, we bring you entertainment news and views, celebrate classic Hollywood, enjoy cocktails with a Tinseltown twist, interview talented local actors and directors, and chat with industry experts from L.A. to the U.K. Today is August 27th. Thank you for joining us for episode 41 in the second half of our interview with the lovely and talented Kathy Garver. Kathy is most fondly remembered for her starring role as Sissy in the long-running CBS hit Family Affair, and this week she's back to talk about her latest projects, what she's learned over six decades in showbiz, and the intricacies of narration and voice work. Kathy is one multi-talented actor. And no matter what element of entertainment you're interested in learning about, we think a great place to start is at your local community theater. That's where Matt and I met, and you'll never meet a group of people more generous with their time and talent than theater people. And if the stage and screen aren't calling you, though, that's okay, too, because the most important thing for an actor to have is an audience. So we're lucky to have such a vibrant local arts community, and we encourage you to follow us on Facebook at, at Heilman and Haver to keep up on all the latest theater happenings. One such happening is happening at Western Washington Center for the Arts in Port Orchard. The Pirates of Penzance, the hysterical Gilbert and Sullivan musical classic, opens September 10th and runs Friday, Saturday, and Sundays until Sunday, October 3rd. The show is directed by our friend and past guest Dan Estes and choreographed by another past guest, Rebecca Ewan. Tickets start at $19, so dust off that old eye patch and peg leg and visit wwca.us today. And seeing as this is a stage and screen podcast, mark your calendars for the Seattle Film Summit coming to the Emerald City virtually and in person September 3rd through the 11th. This premier event is a series of interactive, educational panels and workshops focused on connecting our local industry to LA, New York, and the world. The summit is a hybrid event comprised of classes, workshop, panels, film screenings, pitch sessions, award ceremonies, and networking opportunities. And we'll be there to cover it all. So watch our social media pages for more info, or better yet, join us. Register at seattlefilmsummit.com, and we hope to see you there. And now we're pleased to bring you the second half of our interview with special guest Kathy Garver. Most fondly remembered for her starring role as Sissy in the long-running CBS hit Family Affair, Kathy Garver has garnered critical acclaim in movies, stage, radio, voiceover animation, and audiobook narration. Legendary Cecil B. DeMille was one of the first to recognize Kathy's talent. Originally hired for a small part in the epic motion picture The Ten Commandments, Kathy was noticed by the great director who had special scenes written into the movie to highlight the little girl. During her teenage years, Kathy added radio and stage to her burgeoning film and television career and was a freshman majoring in speech at UCLA when she was cast in Family Affair to star as Sissy alongside Brian Keith and Sebastian Cabot. One of the warmest and most enduring series in the 1960s and 70s, Family Affair earned Kathy a host of accolades such as Best Actress from the Family Television Awards, and it continues to be popular today and actually is available on Amazon Prime. And today, Kathy is an active, accomplished, and versatile actress, appearing in such films as Sweet November and The Princess Diaries. Kathy is also very much in demand for her numerous vocal characterizations and is best known as Firestar, a mutant superhero in the Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends TV series. She is also a regular at comic conventions and autograph shows where she greets her many fans. Kathy also added author to her long list of accomplishments. Her first book, The Family Affair Cookbook, was a tasty trip down memory lane, and her 2015 memoir, Surviving Sissy, My Family Affair of Life in Hollywood, was just released in paperback. This year, Kathy has two more books scheduled for publication, TV Dinners with a Side Dish of Stars, and to celebrate the 55th anniversary of Family Affair, Family Affair, a pictorial scrapbook, will be released in September. Currently, Kathy can be seen on her YouTube channel cooking show, Cooking with Kathy and Scott, and she'll soon be launching a podcast called All Things Classic with director, writer, and producer John Norton. Kathy's voice has been heard in Apollo 13, which was awarded the Academy Award for Sound, by the way. Ransom, Backdraft, and Jingle All the Way, all directed by Ron Howard. And she has also recorded over 80 audiobooks for Brilliance Audio, Dove, and Listen and Live. We rejoin Kathy now at her home in Bell Canyon, California. You, you've narrated, like you said, 80 books, 80 plus books, including your own memoir, Surviving Sissy, Patty Duke's autobiography, In the Presence of Greatness, and one of my favorites on your list, The Art of Spooning. I love that. <laughs> something, something we could all use a little instruction on, I think. Uh, but when it comes to doing fiction, um, I'm listening to James Elroy's book now, This Storm, uh, his his second L.A. quartet. Uh, and the narrator switches in and out of voices so quickly. You think of someone like Jim Dale, who narrated the U.S. version of Harry Potter. How do you keep track of what voice belongs to which character? Are you highlighting? Is there color coding from a technique side? What does that look like? 
when I first started out, I color coded everything. So I, I highlighted them all. Now, the main character would be in yellow and the girls not to be sexist would be in pink. The boys would be in blue. You know, there would be purple and green, you know, for the main characters and the subsidiary characters. When I was going down, I would do just a quick thing of the character is a person I know, you know, hmm. so I would put in the left hand column Beverly and then I would say Jim and then Beverly and then Stuart. And all those people, I, um, Beverly, why are you, why, why do I have to be in your book like this? Because honey, that's what she's doing. But why is she doing that? Well, because it's her career. I don't think it's her career. Why not? So once, once you've done more of them, then you can go immediately and you don't have to look back to your color coding. But at the beginning, just as analyzing a scene, you would say, okay, this character has those particular characteristics. And you, I mean, there's a whole big thing about if you were developing a character, but it's worth it if it's the main character. So then you would say, okay, this is the, the voice pattern of the character. So this is a 30, no, okay. This, this is a 30 year old woman and she has um, some children and she lives in in Bell Canyon and she's very soft and she's very subtle and um, she speaks um, with their tongue at the top of her palate and her lips are soft and she um, is her her attitude is just to be kind to people not particularly my character but <laughs> you know there's the character so you're developing that character and again like Perry King would say you you forget you know, and James Mason, forget all of that. And when you come to it, you say, well, I already know that character. And then you just do it. And then as I say, when you go bump, 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 to me, I write in, in the left-hand panel. Or now, of course, I mean, because I've been doing this for 20 years. Now now you just go on the, the, in, the your, your screen and with the highlighted copy there, and then you can highlight it that way. This is this is taking me reading stories to my son when he was a baby and using a different voice as a porcupine and a duck and all that just to the next level. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's, you know, and that's what, you know, a, a beginning voiceover class is, is that we all have different voices inside of us. Like if you were talking to your, your loved one, you're going to speak one way. If you're talking to your boss, you're going to speak another way. If you're talking to your child, you're going to speak another way. If you're talking to your you know, duck. come on, cubby, come, 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 come. So already you have six voices. So it is not as awesome, you know, and, and difficult as it is to be able to, to make a lot of different voices. Like, you know, you already have a porcupine and you have all kinds <laughs> of things, Greg, that, that you're able to do. And it's that, and again, and another little hint is that you always put that you're talking to someone, you know, you're not just reading lines, you know, and this is like, I'm talking to Nat. I'm talking to Greg when I'm a porcupine. I, and I want to know, you know, do you think I'm a little prickly or not? What do you think? <laughs> come on, come on, Greg. You're not talking to me. You know, so you're actually talking to someone. One of the things Matt and I have tried to weave in the podcast, among other topics, is the future of some of these roles and technology, of whether technology can replace or not replace. We talked to Greg Barbanel, a Foley artist about can technology replace a Foley artist? This is another one of those things that because there's so much emotion with your character building and that you have to capture within a voice, I don't know how technology would be able to, you know, take the place of a replicate, a yeah. Exactly, of a voice artist. I agree with you, of course, 100%, because it is robotic if you have a technological voice. And not only that, it changes. And there's a different response, and that will be based on what the other person has said to you, how that uh, makes you feel, you know, how that makes that character feel. And if a, an automaton has just been programmed with just a series of, if someone is mean to you, you say, no, well, but maybe there's something else. You know, that person could say, no, I'm mean to you. Oh, no, no. 
you know? So, and, and even though you might have perhaps a list of oh, manipulative, uh, sexy or this, you then push those buttons. In my estimation, it's not going to be the same heartfelt spiritual light that will be, you know, understood and, and taken. Yeah, AI is going to have a hell of a time understanding context. Yes, yes, I I think that I think that is it's very very important. And when I in, in, on the computer and I said you don't under you know they don't they don't get it, you know they they just don't get as you say the context in which it's spoken. So much nuance, yeah. The nuance, the the nuance and the context. So, so hopefully, in my lifetime, we're not going to be replaced. <laughs> by AI and these automatons. So Kathy, you've been working on, on stage and screen for over six decades. We've talked about a number of the accomplishments that you've had, different film roles, television roles. Um, currently, if you look at your IMDb page, geez, you've got nine projects current, currently either filming or in pre-production. So what is your advice to someone who's younger or not even younger, someone at any age really, who wants to try to get started in any of the fields that you've worked, whether it's voice work or acting or um, any of that stuff, what, what, what would you say to them? Well, I was like at Best Buy the other day and I ran into this fellow because I spill wine into my keyboard. And so <laughs> I had to go to Best Buy and get a new keyboard. And so we got in a conversation and he was a voiceover person or wanted, wanted to be during COVID. He said, well, I started doing this. And so I, and I was saying, well, first of all, you, you have to learn what your profession is. You have to learn the skills. That's, that's number one. And I told him, you can Google now. You can Google like classes that you can take online. And it depends on you know, what you actually want to do. But that's my number one thing is, is to learn it. And don't be so egotistical that you can say, oh, I can do this. And you get to a set. And you have no, you know, experience. You don't know what you're doing. And like in, in audiobooks, or if you're making a, a demo, you have to be careful of that demo because they'll listen to it once and they say, well, I, I don't like that particular person. So you, I, it, that's what I say is, is to um, heighten your skills, learn your skills. Uh, we like to when we when we talk with folks who have a a career that spans uh, so many years and so many different industries as as yours has. Is there a moment that stands out in your career, perhaps when you were pulled aside by a mentor, perhaps a name that we might recognize and given some advice, like we like we mentioned, um, like Mr. King, uh, really working with one of his heroes, uh, James Mason, and and getting uh, some acting advice. Anything in your career that stands out? I, well, actually, I think there there's a couple, well, maybe three things. I mean, it was nice that um, I was discovered by Cecil B. DeMille. That was great. Right. Nice. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. That's, that's <laughs> almost enough right there. <laughs> was, he, was, he, was he as scary to a child as he, as he seems to have been to adults? <laughs> well, actually, I, you know, when I was, I was on the set and uh, I heard this, this boy, don't let that little girl's face get in the camera. I said, who is that? Where, where's that voice coming from? Is that God? Because he was on a great big crane. It's sitting on the crane <laughs> overlooking the thing. And then he descended. So I thought, and here I am nine years old. Mm -hmm, who is wow. that? So, but that is a little away from the question you asked. I think that the two mentors was uh, Ed Hartman, that was a producer creator of uh, Family Affair and also My Three Sons and, and wonderful films. And he says, acting is all through your eyes. Hmm. And he told me that. Uh, when we were doing, and he says, and now, you know, of course, the windows of the soul, but that stood with me a lot. And so when you're looking into somebody's eyes and you are letting the emotion go, and this is especially true in film and TV, obviously not on stage, but still, even on stage, you want to let your heart connect with that other person. And you're looking straight into their eyes and letting them know who you are and what you're feeling. And um, so that was um, that was a good mentor. And also my friend, Jimmy Doolittle, who was a wonderful theatrical impresario and had originally the Huntington Hartford Theater in Los Angeles, which then became the, the James Doolittle Theater. And on a business sense, he said, 
you know, you can wait around for things. He says, but develop your own projects. He says, go find, and he was primarily into plays. Find a play you want to do. Go do that play. You know, uh, find out in, in different theaters where you can actually put it. And that was really, really good because in my lifetime, I have seen the worst agents I have ever seen in my life. And you are your own best advocate. You've got to push yourself forward. You have to create your own projects. You can't sit and wait for the phone to ring or the email to come. As it, that's not going to happen. I mean, it will happen maybe and maybe not. In my life, I, I get 85% of the things myself. Wow. I do. I have a question for you on, on your first. Actually, I have a question on, on both of those pieces of advice. The first one is around the eyes because I've noticed I'll watch something and a really good actress, like little micro muscle movements around their eyes say so much. And I wonder if that's natural that comes out as part of the emotion of letting yourself, letting your soul come out through your eyes, that, that, that emotion is, is expressed there, or is that something you can train? Can you train your eye muscles to do little micro movements that can present uh, in, in a change of emotion just with a little, twitch or something like that what you what you do is train your your mind and spirit to connect and then what will happen is naturally your eye will twitch or there will be a micro motion i mean way back when they were teaching speech and each motion you know and each movement meant a particular thing and that was a very mechanical type of thing but the the analysis and the mechanical thing comes in knowing what you were doing. Like, I'm going to connect with you right now. And right now I, I, I feel a sense of sadness. And so I, I might, you know, blink or start to cry. Oh, and that's another thing. You, you keep your, you try not to blink. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and again, these are skill tactics that, that one learns. Um, and that's better for a close-up. You know, you're not going to be going like this when the, when the camera is there. So it's a compendium and it's a knowledge of putting like the left and the right brain together, where your analytical side is going to join with your emotional side to be one. So you know that you can't move when you're in this frame. You know that you are going to connect through your eyes and then you let your emotion take care of it. And then it will... It will just happen. Daryl Hickman, um, Dwayne Hickman's brother, is a wonderful teacher. I took some classes and, and he wrote a good book. And it's the unconscious consciousness of acting. Hmm. So it, it, it's, a, it, it's a conscious being and then you are unconscious and, and letting yourself be. Interesting. Now, so, so this is a podcast about acting. So hey, <laughs> I mean, here we are. Yeah, a, a lot of reading I've done, they talk about listening acting is listening and reacting you can't react in truth if you're not listening and paying attention so i suppose that's really what your mentor was referring to is you can't listen unless you're focused on that person intimately yes and you know though i tried that <laughs> and and what happens i think that you become too focused on listening to the person and you forget what you're doing in the scene and and what is your your actual objective or what what you what you want out of it so if you're constantly looking at the person you know you're not incorporating the fact that i really don't want to look at this person because he's going to find out that i'm a liar so i really can't look at it so you can listen but you listen not by particularly looking so it's where the conscious meets the unconscious yeah right right was there any time in your career that you chose a project um, that was something that you wanted to do while you had another one that you could have chosen that maybe would have been a higher profile project or there was more money or something like that. Some experience where you kind of followed your heart and did what you wanted to rather than what maybe even some other people advised you to do. Never. I always follow the money. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. Okay. So I'm following the money to bringing out my books. I hate to say it's the 55th anniversary of Family Affair, but being the true person that I am, I have to admit to that. Even though I'm 39, I don't know 
how that happened that there's so many years magic of um, hollywood magic yes, that's, that's <laughs> it. you got it you got it man it is indeed and so um that's this year and big celebratory year in honor of that i'm bringing out a book called the family affair scrapbook which will debut on September the 12th of 2021, which was when Family Affair first debuted, September 12th, 1966, along with Batman and the monkeys. It was a very fun time in, in America's life, I think, in the, in the middle 1960s. So, and along with that, they are bringing out a paperback version of my Surviving Sissy book, uh, my Family Affair of Hollywood, which was brought out in 2015, the hardback. So they're bringing out the paperback this year. And then I have the third book, which is the TV Dinners TV cookbook that we talked about earlier. So my books are all coming out. The movie that I did, Old Man Jackson, will uh, come out in the fall. Hopefully we will start doing TV dinners. In the interim, I'm doing a lot of appearances the weekend of the 18th, 19th, 20th, and 21st, I'll be at the Mid-Atlantic uh, Nostalgia Convention, along with Tony Dow and Jerry Mathers and, oh, cool. uh, and lots of interesting people. In uh, And then the weekend after that, I'm going to go up to the Western Legends Roundup, which is in Kanab, Utah because I did a lot of Westerns when I was a child. <laughs> and I must say... Uh, Last month, um, well, it was a whole big backstory that I won't tell you about. My husband always says, Kathy, don't do the backstory. Just <laughs> bottom line. I said, okay, honey. Um, We're interested in the backstory. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, then a year ago, I went on an audition to be a spokesperson for Silverwood, which is in Idaho. Right. Yeah. Silverwanda spokesperson and um i would ride a horse and come in and say everybody come to silverwood uh so i didn't hear from these people for a year because there was something got got in the way like a little pandemic so they closed the amusement parks well it came up anyway so that's the backstory <laughs> last, <laughs> last night i went to idaho i had to ride this horse now you know how old i am 39 so I hadn't ridden a horse in like 12 years. But being an actor, you say you can do everything, right? You Absolutely. can <laughs> I I can ride a horse, I can skydive, I can, you know, sword fight, whatever you want me to do. And I could ride a horse, but as I say, not for a while. Anyway, I uh, took some some lessons and I renewed my ability to get on the back of a horse at the same time, <laughs> riding the horse, making a stop in camera, <laughs> saying my line. <laughs> in the heat of the summer so that was the experience that all us actors do because we love our art that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the best place uh for our uh, listeners to find well, it, it, kathygarver.com would be a good place to start and then uh i've seen your books are on amazon as well uh we're gonna get a copy of surviving sissy in paperback uh for one of our lucky listeners to to win here in the next week or so so stay tuned to our Facebook page for that. And I'm looking forward to uh, just to skimming the pages. I promise I won't crease it too badly. Everybody <laughs> out there uh, is uh, now. And also you're on YouTube as well. Your cooking show is on YouTube. Uh, any any place else folks can go to keep up with uh, all things Kathy Garver? Well, my Kathy Garver fan page is is really good place to go. I'm on Twitter, but I don't do it a lot. I don't tweet a lot. And I'm also on Instagram. So Instagram is KG Sissy. And I post there as well as my Facebook and they're my own posts. And that's why I'm only at 12,000 instead of 120,000. <laughs> One can only do so much when they're trying to water the flowers and feed the dog and, you know, get packed for Maryland. <laughs> we, we know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It's only so many hours in the day. We all, we all only have 24. I know. <laughs> well, we've sure enjoyed our time together and uh, thank you so much for joining us. Tell Wally and the Beav we we send our best uh, next week and uh, and safe travels and uh, keep us updated as those books are released and we'll get you back on. Will do. Thank you so much. All right. All right thank th you. Thanks, Kathy. Well, thank you again to our guest, Kathy Garver. You can find out more about Kathy's career, order copies of her books, and keep up with her latest projects at kathygarver.com 
and at Kathy Garver fan page on Facebook, both linked in the show notes. Join us next week when we'll be joined by documentary filmmaker and adjunct professor at Bremerton's Olympic College, Mark Evans. Mark's latest project, Clay Dreams, premiered at the 2021 Tribeca Film Festival, and he joins us to talk about his journey as a teacher and the future of filmmaking in the digital age. If you enjoy the show, please make sure to follow us and share the podcast with a friend. Tell them to visit HeilmanandHaver.com and tune in on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Amazon Audible, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Pandora. You can drop us a message on Facebook and Twitter and check out photos of all of Greg's delicious cocktails on Instagram. Then go get the recipes on our In The Mix playlist on YouTube. As always, thank you wherever you are for supporting local theater and for joining us here on Heilman & Haver. 